Hey YouTube, uh, thanks for checking this video out. I basically wanted to talk about two things. Um, first I wanted to say, feel the burn, vote for Bernie. Here in California, I'm voting for Bernie. Um, that's where my loyalty is. And uh, secondly, I wanted to talk about uh, prepping and how I prep, why I prep. Um, so here, uh, I think in this time, uh, it's kind of a scary, interesting time. Uh, I don't, I don't think we, I haven't seen a candidate like Bernie Sanders or Donald Trump <laughs> in my lifetime. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty scary uh, and interesting. And um, so. I think when people prep, they have to keep in mind, uh, obviously the future, but also that there are several different types of things that could go wrong. Uh, not just the specific prep that, uh, scenario that they're uh, preparing for, uh, planning for, expecting to happen. Uh, it can. I think because there's so many different types of scenarios, I think the smartest thing is to try to cover as many of those different scenarios that could possibly happen instead of just putting all your eggs in one basket whether it be if you feel it's going to be a market crash a great depression people are going to be uh, fighting over bread and, and uh, water and uh, supplies or or do you think that um, we're going to have an earthquake I, I, I think in california there is more chance of an earthquake happening than probably anywhere else in the world um, but i think you have to be specific to certain climate and environmental uh, hazards and catastrophes that could happen. So, um, you know, for example, uh, here we have a great, great big deal of fire. Uh, it seems that we're getting heat waves more and more frequently. Um, more and more bush uh, is, is uh, catching on fire and uh, causing people to lose their houses, their businesses. Um, and keeping them from going to certain areas uh, because of, of legitimate wildfire, and uh, that's uh, that's kind of scary that um, it keeps getting hotter. Uh, I think that climate change is pretty much a fact. Uh, so that is a possible water world scenario uh, way deep in the future, um, but you also have nuclear attacks especially if you get a guy like Trump behind the, the nuclear codes um, there's a very the, the chance of nuclear war just went up times a thousand uh, or you know uh, it could be a biological attack you know it could be either an engineered one or uh, an epidemic maybe because of our dependence on antibiotics we'll, we'll wipe ourselves out with a superbug um, so, you know, all these scenarios have to be treated with some level of acknowledgement and precaution. Um, otherwise, your preps are useless, right? If, um, if you have a bug out spot and you can't get to it because the roads are crushed, uh, destroyed, or filled with uh, abandoned vehicles and the only way you can get there is walk, uh, are you even going to make it there alive? Uh, Unless you have a, a bike, you're not in, you're not going to make any headway. Uh, you're going to be a sitting duck. So I think bugging out, I think is a pretty bad strategy. I think anybody who who their whole livelihood depends on them being at the right spot at the right time, I think is a little bit unresponse is a little irresponsible uh, because you're kind of just asking for the best case scenario already, and it's like. Okay, during a nuclear attack, or even an epidemic, right? You don't know where exactly they're going to hit, and how hard, how devastating the effects of that initial attack is going to spread. Uh, so, if you don't die immediately from the blast, which you're already inc incredibly lucky, you get some leeway, but you don't know how close you are to the radiation. Do you need to take iodine? Do you do you um, you know, do you need some some equipment to detect how close you will be? Uh, you know, how, how how and how much danger the the follow how long it the it could take to get to where you're at. Um, you know, and that's that's true in both you know uh, biological and nuclear attacks. Uh, yeah, even chemical. So uh, these are all factors that if you do make it out alive, right and, and 
and you're not already at your bug out spot, if, if your bug out, let's just say best case scenario, right? You're at your bug out location when you figure out there's a disaster. Uh, great, because now you don't have to get there, right? You don't have to put your family or yourself in danger by trying to get to a spot. And by the way, if, 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 if you're thinking an RV is a good idea, I, I kind of want to agree with you. Um, but in any, any scenario, there's going to be panic. Uh, the roads are going to be packed. Everyone's going to want to go. Um, and eventually, you're going to be stuck with a bunch of gridlocked, um, possibly not even inhabited, abandoned cars, right? Uh, and then how good is having an RV? The only thing you could do is turn right back around or try to go off-road. Uh, so unless you have an all-terrain RV, um, probably going to have a hard time. Not only that, but you're a constant target. Uh, it's going to be like Mad Max, Road Warrior. Uh, you're always going to have a target on the back of your head and you might have some safety between you know night and day where you could travel, uh, but you're, you're always going to be on, on defense. And, and finally, that's, that's one of the biggest problems with bugging in, um, is that you're always going to be on defense. If you're out there in the woods and you manage to get way off, of, off the grid and uh, you're not discoverable, that's, that's probably a good plan if you can make it that far. But again, the chances of you making it there are pretty slim, especially if you have to bring a family along. So, okay, let, let, I mean, let's say you're at work, you find out everything is crazy, you survive, uh, yeah, you can make it to your, I think it's really ho hopeful, wishful thinking. Um, I think the smartest thing to do is to already be at your bug out spot. Um, but the problem with a bug out spot is it's permanently fixed. Uh, you're always going to be defending it and it has a limited amount of resources. Uh, unless you have a farm, but then again, like I said, if you have a farm, you're going to need supplies, you're going to need to do some bartering, you're probably going to get discovered at some point. And, uh, and then you have, uh, that kind of, that kind of is the, um, the bug out strategy I think is a little bit smarter because you have more freedom to choose the safety you're in. Um, you can see, you can assess better from afar and make the decision to you know pull into the woods in your RV for I don't know how long or you know you can you can take your chance um, but I would say be as light as possible avoid you know try to avoid roads major roads uh, and then you could probably you could probably survive like that if, if you don't get discovered either so my solution was to live on a boat and I don't know if you could tell but um, you get you get used to the waves and you get used to the rocking and the, the sounds of the sails. I have a sailboat, and um, my my decision for that was you already had a built you already have a built-in defense of anybody who wants to get on has to be either swimming on here, which is not advisable, uh, or boating over here. You'd have to motor boat or paddle boat. Um, so you already have a moat, right? Um, and then on top of that, you have a lot less area to, to defend. There's less places that you won't see a threat coming. You have pretty much 360 degrees of uh, scanning, and uh, I think you have a much better time uh, checking the water for threats than checking, say, a forest. Um, and also, uh, you are mobile, and I think that's the most important part, is that it's never going to be encumbered on the ocean like it will be on the roads. And it's never going to be as dangerous, because if you want to get away from someone, you have a much better chance at, at getting away. Um, you could run indefinitely, right? And uh, unless, you know, unless they have like more gas or a faster boat than you, um, then you would have to defend yourself last case scenario. Um, but see, during uh, an apocalypse uh, or depression, um, gasoline is going to become a precious commodity and uh, sailing may not be as efficient, but it works and it's free and you can do it as, as long as there's um, air, so wind, uh, those things aren't going anywhere. And some sails, obviously. You can, you can I got I got spare sales, no big deal.
uh, and then uh, when you have the the prepper mentality, I think you think about three, four different areas. You, you think about what do you want to do for water? How strong is your water? Uh, a bit your procurement system, uh, food, um, shelter, and defense, and. Uh, yeah, I would say that. I would say that's about it right there. Those are your main priorities. I think with uh, with a boat, you have uh, water covered um, by distilling water. Um, you can get um, a professional distiller for distilling alcohol um, that runs on a burner. Uh, it would basically run off an electric burner, uh, and I think this is a great tool uh, when you have solar panels because you could essentially have constant supply of water running pretty much all the time depending on how much battery life you have how much sun you get that kind of thing but you don't want to use tech uh, you don't want to use electronics you could just as easily um, use the solar uh, the, the solar heat from the sun and uh, condense water uh, you know out of a bucket into uh, some kind of a catching device right I've se I've seen I've seen them do it on YouTube with uh, uh, man versus not man versus wild uh, man wild woman or man woman wild something like that and uh, their strategy was pretty smart what they would do is they would take water whether it be fresh water or salt water and put it in a big old bucket and they'd start a fire and you know, obviously you just need f some sticks and wood and f fuel and you get coals the water starts to boil and then above the uh, the steam they put uh, tarp plastic tarp over it and uh, then collected the waters on the sides and I thought that was brilliant um, because now you have uh, fresh water all the time distilled water all the time and you don't need a well you don't need to be by a lake uh, you only need a few basic pieces of equipment and the Sun and you have yourself fresh drinking water really good drinking water, pure drinking water I might add, um, better than uh, I would say city water or, uh, or filtering water. Uh, and so that takes care of water and then obviously if anybody is a fisherman, ocean fish are great, um, halibut, bass, we have sharks, we have stingrays, we have oysters, uh, all of them very easy to catch. Um, I believe uh, with very little effort I can catch more fish than I could eat and I could probably co collect more food than I will need um, so I don't need to have a big storage the only the only things uh, that I prep store are things that will last a really long time and things that are highly nutritious and high in calories um, basically I have a stock of honey um, beans black beans um, some rice um, and some dried potatoes. Um, I think the honey's awesome because it lasts forever. Uh, like sugar, if you have a distiller, you can ferment water and make alcohol. So that is going to be very valuable. Uh, all you would need to do is find sugar, fruits, um, and then you have yourself a supply of not only alcohol is it good for disinfecting things, uh, for cleaning things, uh, but other people are going to want it. That's going to be a commodity that you can trade for. Um, and if you wanted to, you could burn it. You could use it as fuel. You could put it in your stove. Uh, I think it'd be a waste uh, to to burn it, but um, yeah, you could may maybe make a Molotov cocktail out of it. Throw it on somebody. Uh, you know, marauder's boat that's trying to get onto you. It could, it could be pretty useful in a lot of different... So versatile, I think, is what's great about it. Um, and the black beans, you can e eat them the way they are. Um, obviously, you have to cook them for a while. So uh, I actually prefer to sprout them. <laughs> I sprout them because uh, you can do two things with sprouts. Uh, you can eat the sprout, and then you can use the leftover, the uh, un... un basically the seed, uh, it opens up and it's basically sugar uh, it's turned in it's it's when it's sprouted I'm not that scientific but I've seen a lot of people do this before 
and I've sprouted I've sprouted before I just haven't been able to successfully make um, uh, alcohol from the beans um, there's a way you can do it where you can turn it into a mash mix it with sugar uh, and yeast and uh, I don't know how good it would be um, so if anyone has tried turning beans into alcohol please feel free to share that story um, and so I think that water world kind of scenario I'm sorry gives you more freedom you have your food you have your water and security is so much better than it would be on land um, if you want to get away from people it's so so much easier to find a spot to hide and to get away and to dock or to anchor and you have less threats you can see better um, you don't really need that much weaponry um, on a boat because you I mean you're probably not going to encounter anybody and if you do um, the chances are that they're going to come up trying to maraud you and shoot you um, might be pretty bad if uh, if you have a pretty decent response to it um, you know like you know sending a Molotov cocktail out there or even just having a couple firearms uh, maybe a shotgun a rifle <laughs> you know you could improvise uh, a flamethrower or you know harpoon uh, you, you can you can go crazy with the amount of uh, improvised weapons you can use on a boat so I think I think your chances are better of either avoiding a fight altogether or coming out on top if you have you know if you have just slightly better uh, defense capabilities than they do you'll you could survive it come out you know on top uh, so I guess that thank you for watching my video um, I'm also going to be having some other videos on everyday carry items which I, I think are really fascinating to talk about and to think about uh, I'm trying to think if I missed anything all right well please leave me any comments uh, on your strategies on any tips that you have um, please like it so that I know that this is the kind of thing that you guys are interested in um, and I hope you guys have a great day